Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Today I want to go over something that I consider to be quite straightforward, but if you're just starting out with Power BI, it might be something that you might be finding a little bit difficult to piece together, and that's how do you calculate profit margins, okay? And so say for instance you're working in an organization you're trying to calculate up sales or you're trying to calculate up revenue, you've, you'll, have, you'll have your sales table, right? So I'll just jump to the model here so we can have a, have a better look. So you have your, say your revenue table or your sales table or your transactions table. Usually it will be in this sort of layer in your, in your model, right? This is how you want to try and set up most of your models and use it using the, the, the waterfall technique that I talk about a lot. And... What happens is within your sales table, you might only have like your revenue information, you might only have um, quantity, unit price, unit cost. So, so where does profit, like how do you know what the profit margin was on your calculation, uh, on, on each transaction? And then following on from that, how do you actually calculate the profit margin, you know, and make it totally dynamic so you can look at well, what's my product margin by customer? What's my product margin by uh, products? Uh, what's my, by, by store or by region? You know, all of those different things. You want to be able to make things dynamic, right? And that's what I'm going to show you um, how to do that today. So... Uh, so I guess what you got to do is you got to build it up and you got to use measure branching, okay? You got to build it up, start from something really simple and then build it up. And so I've already calculated up my revenue here. So I've just got total revenue if you look up here in the formula bar. So think about what we need, profit margin, okay? Profit margin, we're going to ultimately want to go total profits divided by total revenue, right? So we have to somehow first get to profits because we don't have profits in our sales table at all. So currently we've got our revenue, but now we actually need to work out our profit. So the the the, the thing that's missing in the equation there is is costs, right? And so we've got total unit costs here, but we need to get our overall costs per trend uh, per transaction here. Okay, and how this is set out in this particular data set is we need to go order quantity times total unit cost. Okay, and so I'm going to jump back to here and I'm going to create it inside of here. Oh, no, I don't want to get a quick measure. Just one second. You could do a quick measure, but I don't advise it. I think you should always want to just create simple measures, right? And I'm going to call this one total costs, and I'm going to use sum x, right? I'm going to use an um, I'm going to use an aggregate, uh, sorry, an iterating function. I'm going to go jump down through the sales table, and I'm going to go order. I'm going to go cost. I'm just going to type in total unit costs times the quantity, All right? And then I'm just going to finish that off and push enter. And I'm going to bring it into my table here. Okay, so now we have a dynamic revenue and we have a dynamic cost. And then very simply from here, we can go profit margin. We can go profits, right? And then um, following on from that, we can go profit margin. So this is this is just the technique that I advise all the time, right? Is that you might think, okay, well, profit margins. There's there's nothing in my data that can get me there. But if you build things out slowly, little bit by little bit, you can, okay? And that's exactly what we're doing here. And this is a perfect example where I'm going to go total revenue. I'm just going to reference my measure and then go total cost, right? And I've got a really simple measure that I've branched out into. And I'm just going to go enter and I see that it's popped down into the wrong folder here. And I'm just going to change it up. So I'll just go to measure tools and home table. I want that in my key measures. Measure tools, key measures. Okay, so now I've got my total profits and I've got my total revenue. And now I can get my profit margins, right? So I could go profit margins like this. And all I've got to do is do a simple division. So I'm going to go divide total profits by total revenue okay and then i'm just going to put a zero in just for an alternative result and if i drag this into my table i now have a dynamic profit margins okay and obviously i'd want to change this into a percentage um i'll just go one decimal place i think okay so now, if you look down here, we have our profit margins, right? And currently, we're looking at our profit margins by our customer name, right? So what I could do here is I could just do some conditional formatting, potentially, 
um, usually I think for these ones you probably want to do like a, a background color from highest to lowest I think that probably looks a little bit better and you can then just do some quick sorting there if you want potentially maybe you want to adjust the colors it's a, a quite a deep uh, dark blue so you probably want to make that a little bit lighter or maybe make the text coloring white potentially um, but let's have a look what you can also do though is you don't first of all need all these intermediary calculations by the way so you can just get rid of those you can get rid of all those intermediary calcs and you can create a, a bar chart and because but because there's a lot of data here it doesn't actually look that good right for customer names so you probably you've got to you've got to try and weigh up you know what sort of data set you're trying to look at this in right and to me there's probably too much too many customers for this to make any sense you probably want to you probably want to use some sort of grouping technique i would say to say okay well these are my customers that are in the 50 to 60 percent profit margin bracket so on and so forth so there's a lot of grouping techniques out there that i've put that i've put out in um, a number of different blogs and videos and stuff so 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 certainly check those out um, you can also check them out um, at Enterprise DNA online. That's our um, you can gain access to that with membership. So there's there's unlimited amount of um, information on all of those techniques, including advanced grouping ones that would look good uh, for this sort of data set. But you know, say for instance, you want to actually look at it by state, right? Well, the way it's dynamic because I can just bring in state here. I can bring in state, and then all of a sudden, I then have different. Um, I have different, they all look quite similar. Uh, well, they are actually all the same. It's probably because the data the data, the data, data is, is just totally random. If I make this shorter, let's see if we can get different figures. Oh, sorry, I know why I've got it wrong, because this state is the wrong one. That state is wrong. I've got to get state from, that state actually was, didn't actually um, have any connection with my model. That's what I got confused, because it's out here. So what I should probably do is to stop that, I would say hide it. So that's a good technique to use, right? And then I don't see it in my field section anymore. Okay, and so now I can see a breakdown of all of my states, right? All of my states and their profit margins. And you could take things further, and you know, there's just so much flexibility here. You know, not only is it dynamic in terms of you just got to change, you know, any sort of filter coming from your model, right? You can get the profit margins now. But then you can overlay other techniques on it. Like say you only want to show the top five profit margin states or the top or the bottom five profit margin states. So these are techniques that you can overlay on top of here that I think can add even more value to those those sort of insights. So those are some some great DAX techniques that you, you, you could potentially use. Okay, but this was all just about profit margins, how you can actually enable these um, you know, pretty easily, honestly, uh, inside your Power BI report. So it's just a, a matter of you know having some un understanding of some simple DAX formulas, and then measure branching, how you can branch out into these things. And you know the techniques that I'm telling you here, they they are so u reusable in any sort of calculation you're doing. It might not be revenue, it might not be profit margin, but it might be something else. It might be other some other metric, and you can use exactly the same techniques to get there. Okay, so let's round things off. Uh, thanks for listening in. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. I'm re really going to uh, be putting a lot of lot more content out, um, and I want you to get that as soon as as soon as it does um, does um, get published. And um, if you really liked this uh, content and got and getting a lot out of um, the stuff we're putting out through the channel, then don't forget to um, like the videos as well. That's always really appreciated. Okay. Uh, take care. Hopefully, hopefully you got a lot out of this one. Um, all the best and look forward to next time.